go around the room with the staff. So if you'll just uh, give your name and what your area of expertise is. Start off, I'm Pierre Holloman, and I'm Assistant Transit Chief. And I'm just going to go down the list of participants. And please, when I'm calling you, please turn your cameras on and introduce yourselves. All right, let's start with Diane, Diane Trent. All right, let's go to, oh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, I am Mobile. My name is Diane Trent. I am with um, Sandy, the Transit Bureau. I am the bus stop manager. Good afternoon. Thank you. Francis. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Francis Teddy. I am the grounds compliance specialist. Um, I wear the house for DB and Title VI. Thank you. Josh. Good evening, everyone. I'm Josh Drucker. I'm the Transit Technology Manager for uh, Arlington. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. And Kirk. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kirk Dand. <clears throat> I'm Arlington County's WMATA Service Coordinator. Thanks, Kirk. Lauren. Hi. I'm Lauren Breyer. I am a uh, the transit service analyst. Thanks, Lauren. Lynn. Good evening, Lynn Rivers, Transit Bureau Chief. Thanks, Lynn. Paul. Uh, good evening, Paul Mounier. I'm the service planner for the ART bus system. Thanks, Paul. Ritesh. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Ritesh Parikh, project manager. Thank you, Ritesh. Rocco. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Rocco Viscotti, management intern for Arlington County. Okay, thank you, Rocco. And Ryan. Uh, good evening, I'm uh, Ryan Jones. I'm the asset manager for uh, Arlington Transit. All right, thanks, Ryan. And Mr. Chair, I believe that is all from our outstanding team. Okay, great. All right, and my name is John Carton. I'm chair of the Transit Advisory Committee. Hi, I'm James Davenport. I'm vice chair of the TAC. And we have Alexa, right? We, okay, here we go. Go ahead. Yes, I'm here, Alexa Mavridis, uh, chair of the Accessibility Subcommittee and uh, member of the Transit Advisory Committee. Hello, okay. Everyone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Erica Chong. I'm a member of the Advisory Committee. Thanks, Erica. I'm David Sisson, TAC member. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other committee members? Hi. Hi, everyone. This is Mariela Garcia Colbert, member of TAC. Okay, thank you, Mariela. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Angelo. I'm a new member of TAC as of uh, December, so it's good to be here. Okay, good to have you with us. Thank you. All right, any other committee members? Okay, do we have any guests tonight? Good evening, this is Andre Stafford, Metro Bus Planning, Virginia Bus Service. Okay, thank you, Andre. Okay, anybody else that's not had a chance to introduce themselves? Kent Keezer. I'm a prospective uh, member of the um, TAC uh, Accessibility Subcommittee. Okay, great. Thank you, Kent. 
Thanks. Sir. And good okay. evening. This is Josh Tong. I'm a friend of the Transit Advisory Committee. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so let's move on to public comment. Any anybody here for public comment? You'd like to speak? OK. All right. Hearing none. Um, Pierre, do we have a quorum so that we could vote on the minutes? Yes, Mr. Chair, we do have a quorum. We do. OK, OK, great. So let's move on to approval of the minutes from the January 16th meeting. Is there a motion to approve those? So move. This is James. OK, is there a second? Second. I second it. OK, any any comment on the minutes? OK, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed say nay. OK, so they're unanimously approved. All right, good. All right, so the next item here is um, it's approval of accessibility subcommittee members. Uh, now, each of each of the uh, members of the committee should have received some bios of two uh, folks that would like to join the accessibility subcommittee. So um, the first one is Roseanne Ashby, who I know has been active before. And the second one is Kent Kaiser. All right, I don't believe Roseanne's on the call, is she? Thank you. Roseanne, are you on the call? I see that Kent is, I don't see Roseanne. Okay, all right. And this, and uh, so I'd like to give Kent just a opportunity to say a couple things if he'd like to. Just give thanks. us a minute, minute or less. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've been mm -hmm. a um, thirty-year resident of Arlington County. Uh, I've used Star uh, almost exclusively for my transportation since I sustained a, a spinal cord injury in two thousand and seven. Uh, I'm also familiar with ART and the Metro bus system, so uh, it's an issue that's very near and dear to me. Um, and I just think that um, since you guys were gracious enough to expand the membership of the subcommittee, that we ought to take advantage of that. And so one of my uh, goals for the year is to fill those seven slots up uh, with Roseanne and Alexa's help. Thank you. OK, great. All right, is Roseanne still not with us? OK. All right, do I hear a motion to approve the two nominees, Roseanne Ashby and Kent Kaiser? So moved. OK, is there a second? Second. OK. Any discussion on the two nominees? OK, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. OK, it passes unanimously. Congratulations, Kemp. Be good to have you on board. Now we're going to have uh, an access a report from the accessibility committee towards the end of the meeting, so um, we won't go into this in any more detail till we get to that. If that's okay. All right, I'll just remind you that um, you know uh, keep your camera off if you're not currently uh, speaking on an item or speaking before the committee, and and mute yourself as well. 
Okay, the, the next item here is the WMATA proposed FY25 budget update. All right, this is uh, Kirk speaking. I'm a middle-aged white male. I'm wearing a blue shirt. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, in December um, of 2023, Metro presented a budget that included severe cuts and fair increases to address the FY25 structural <coughs> operating deficit. On February 8th, Metro was able to revise the budget. This revised budget avoids the severe service cuts and fare increases previously proposed. It achieves this by focusing on service optimization, sustainable fare increases, and other actions that will help Metro maintain a robust system. Metro identified $50 million in recurring administrative efficiencies through various measures, including reduced consulting services and improved asset management. Metro will implement a salary and wage freeze in FY25, resulting in $38 million in savings. The consumer price index is forecasted to be reduced from 5% to 3%. 3.5% for fiscal year 25. Metro plans to implement targeted service reductions across the system. This includes reducing frequencies on some rail lines and adjusting peak period service windows. Additionally, they'll examine reducing service on some holidays with lower ridership. Bus service reductions were avoided. Metro will transfer $104 million of preventive maintenance program costs from operating the capital to help close the FY25 operating funding gap. This, while this provides short-term relief, it reduces funding available for critical infrastructure projects. The revised FY25 budget includes fare increases, there will be a 12.5 base increase on Metro bus, Metro rail, and Metro access fares. There will also be an additional increase of up to 25% on late nights and weekends, with a cap of $2.50 per trip. Targeted service cuts will also be implemented to save money. Rail service reductions will be implemented, including decreased frequencies on some lines, peak period service windows will be adjusted to concentrate service during the busiest times of the day, and Metro will also operate more six-car trains instead of the eight-car trains that we are used to. This will allow Metro to match capacity with ridership levels better and save on costs. Finally, Metro is examining targeted realignments and reductions of service on some holidays with lower ridership. Metro bus will remain largely unchanged until the introduction of the better bus network redesign. Metro will, re uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Metro will address the FY25 gap through a number of measures. Aggressive expense management and oversight will keep FY25 gross expenses at the FY24 levels. Metro will also transfer some funds from our preventive maintenance program to help close the gap. However, this will decrease funding available for critical infrastructure projects. Metro's funding jurisdictions have communicated a total of $480 million in additional funding for FY25. This funding is above the 3% cap that was previously in place. Maryland is providing $150 million, Virginia is providing $130 million, and the District of Columbia is providing $200 million. And that concludes my presentation, and I am... 
happy and willing to take any questions or comments. Okay. I'm going to ask Laura McNeil to turn her camera off if she would. Uh, Kirk, I got a question for you. That is, you said 130 is coming from Virginia. That's correct. Is that um, Arlington, Fairfax, the state, the whole bit? That yeah, the, the 130 million is the uh, the in entire jurisdiction's uh, contribution towards uh, Metro's funding. So 65 um, million will come from the state directly and the local jurisdictions will make up their local share. Okay, that's 65. Is that consistent with the budget they've, the state yes. just passed? Well, that that was the numbers that, yes, um, the, the General Assembly approved the 65 million for the, for fiscal year 25 and approximately like 85 million for uh, FY 26. Um, and the 65, uh, the, the 130 million is the breakdown of if you took the percentage of each jurisdiction's contribution and then applied that to what the gap had been, that's the number that uh, comes out. The, that number will be, um, the subsidy will be rerun. Um, the calculations will be rerun because uh, there's more recent data from the ridership surveys that show that uh, the ridership has changed in the th three jurisdictions. So um, it appears um, at you know back of the envelope type of math that Virginia might end up paying less than 130, but that official report has not yet been completed. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Kirk about the budget? Yeah, Kirk, this is James. Um, good report. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm just, you said that um, to cover some of the operation shortfall, they're going to scale back on the capital projects. Were there any specific projects that they mentioned that may be delayed because of that? Um, specific project, well, what the message ultimately was was that none of the um, none of the capital projects or capital monies would interfere with the state of good repair. So we will still have uh, the safe system that we are used to. Um, but what um, so, some things might be anything that isn't any project that is not already started that is ancillary. Um, would be delayed. They stay, still stay in the capital improvement plan, but they're just not funded. So, um, for example, um, any of the bus um, depots that were going to be electrified, the um, that have not yet started uh, construction or planning, the, those would be uh, delayed until the um the funding situation is resolved does that answer your question yes it does thank you so um when when does the metro board uh, uh scheduled to approve the budget they're anticipated to approve the budget in the last week of april of this year mm -hmm. with with um then the um that would be their vote to adopt the budget and the budget would go into effect technically on uh, July 1st. But I believe that we might see route changes. I didn't look at the calendar recently. Uh, Andre, do you, will, will the route changes be happening in the last week of June or the first week of July? Uh, the route changes are scheduled for April 14th. I'm sorry, June 14th, my apologies. The 14th June 14th. Okay, mm -hmm. but they, yeah, so kind of that's when the budget goes into place because okay. that's what they're budgeting for. Okay, great. All right, thanks, Kurt, for the update. All now, right, let's move Have on to our next, next item here, which is the Arlington Transit proposed service changes as part of the proposed 25 budget.
Good evening, everyone. Can everyone see my screen, starting with the Arlington Transit and Star proposed FY25 changes? Yes, sir. All right, excellent. Chair Carton, Vice Chair Davenport, committee members, good evening. My name is Clinton Edwards, and I proudly serve the Transit Bureau as the Transit Services Manager. We're going to talk a little bit about the proposed FY25 service changes and some performance metrics this evening. Pull up this presentation and move on to the next slide. So our first, our proposed service changes for the FY 2025 budget. What you'll see over the course of these first four slides is that you will see proposed changes that we have had to make for three of the routes in the system to meet a budget request that we had. Unfortunately, revenues didn't come in as we projected in the county, and so all of departments were asked to look at making revenue or budget reductions. And because of those revenues not coming in as expected, we had to make some route modifications, nothing that we prefer to do or like to do, but as the budget called for, we had to make these reductions. As I start and go through these reductions, you will see that these changes all were in the transit strategic plan. I know we, over the course of last year and in in 2023, we provided you all several, several presentations on the transit strategic plan. These recommendations were coupled with other enhancements. So what you will see in the next couple of slides are just the reductions. And because of the budget issues that we had, we were not able to do those enhancements at this time. So we'll just have to work on that sequencing on getting those enhancements in place as we move forward in the next couple of fiscal years. So the first part of our change, and you'll see two portions on Route 53 where there are changes that are made. On the Route 53 in its current operating environment, um, Route 53 is part of the secondary transit network connecting the Boston, Marymount, and East Falls Church metro stations with Westover and other neighborhoods in North Arlington. See, so have my cursor right there. Currently, the Route 53 operates peak period only service between 6 a.m. and 9.14 and from 2.35 p.m. to 7.39 p.m. Monday through Friday. No weekend service on this 53. The bus operates every 25 minutes and the route also serves East Falls Church, as I previously mentioned, Washington Liberty High School and the VT Research Center and Marymount University. On this first part of the change, you'll see this purple line and the arrow is pointed to the line, the western end of the Route 53 as proposed in the recommended in the transit strategic plan, that will be eliminated is the first part of that. So the Route 53 between East Falls Church and the Madison Community Center will be eliminated. Second part of the route elimination is eliminating Route 61. Route 61, many of you all may be aware, currently provides a north-south connection across the Rosalind Courthouse areas and neighborhoods to the north and south of the corridor. Currently, this route in its current operating condition um, services Fort Myer and Rander Heights neighborhoods weekdays, peak periods only, of course, no Saturday and no Sunday service. So the northern portion of the 61 in here in red where the arrow is, that portion will be eliminated, but the southern portion will be absorbed into the new 5361 alignment that I'll get to. So it's kind of slowly but surely putting the puzzle pieces together. Next, we're going back to the 53. So the the eastern half of the 53 to Roslyn via the Clarendon Wilson Boulevard and the southern alignment of the 61. So what you'll see here is that the 53 currently ends at Boston. However, now in this new alignment, it's going to service this Clarendon Wilson Boulevard corridor and then pick up the southern portion of the 61 if you're following my cursor. Um, you'll see in the next recommendation of the 62 that the 53, this green line, is now going to be picking up the easternmost portion of the 62. And then finally, 
Elimination of Route 62. Route 62 on your screen is where the maroon line is and where you see the outline of it looks like a student graduating from high school, college, or any institution of higher learning. Um, this Route 62 is also part of our secondary transit network, and it connects the courthouse and Boston area along Locum Lane with weekday peak service only, no Saturday, no Sunday service. Buses on the 62 currently operate every 30 to 40 minutes. And every 30, 40 minutes between approximately 6.30 and 9.30 a.m. and 3 to 7.30 p.m. And this route also serves Washington Liberty High School. So on the next slide, so that you could take it all in. So this is all of the changes put together. The both changes on the 53, the elimination of the Route 61, the extension of the eastern half of the 53 to absorb the eastern half of the 62 that goes to the courthouse area. And then, of course, the 53 will capture the southern alignment of the 61 and the elimination of the Route 62, which is maroon on your screen. To capture that graphically one other way, looking at the proposed service change of this slide, looking on your left hand side, you see the proposed service changes. Those portions that are in red, bringing your attention to the western portion of the Route 53 on the western on the um, far left side of the of the graphic, all the portions in red are scheduled to be eliminated. So what you will remain is this yellow line that is part of the 53, picking up the, some of the 62, the southernmost part of the 61. On the right hand side of this graphic, you will see the new art 53 and 61 with no portions eliminated. So this side right here is just the cleaned up version of what the new 5361 will look like minus the northern half of the 61, the western end of the 53, and the 62 in its entirety. I'll leave this here for a few moments so everyone can just take a look at this so you can capture all of the essence of the changes that are being proposed in the FY25 budget. And Clinton, what's the value of the savings here? The value of the savings is just shy of seven hundred thousand dollars. I could give you the exact numbers of I um I have, I can give you the exact numbers, but they both are right at the three hundred and fifty thousand um, dollar range on the total elimination of the sixty two, the reduction of the northern portion of the sixty one, and the reduction the elimination of the western part of the fifty three, right. And this was a part of a whole series of budget reductions that our department, the Department of Environmental Services, had to provide to the county manager's office so that the budget could be balanced for FY25. Okay, great. And of course, okay. your legend shows the high schools and middle schools where their services and services will remain um, afterwards. Okay. And I'll just take a second here. Um, Chair Carton, do you want to take questions at this time or do you want me just to continue on? Well, yeah, I want you to continue on light of the time here. OK, I will breeze through this last part because I think I'm only have four minutes left. Proposed service changes the FY23 metric. So in making these changes, of course, we never make uh, making changes like this or eliminating service is nothing that we like to do and something we take very seriously. So as we looked at the performance of these three routes, the 53, the 61 and the 62, we're looking at it from a weekday passenger per revenue hour and a weekday passengers per revenue mile. All three of these routes rank in the bottom quadrant of all of Arlington arts routes. There are 16 art routes. And so all three of these in both categories rank in the bottom quadrant of the 16 routes that are within these service areas. So we use this metric to, OK, we need to make a reduction. These are three of our lower performing routes, so we can support that based on their passenger per revenue hour and the passengers per revenue mile. I will touch briefly on Title VI. 
Of course, Arlington Transit is committed to providing non-discriminatory transportation services to all of its passengers and potential passengers. Art and Star operates its programs and services without regard to race, color, and national origin in, in accordance with the Title VI of the Civil Rights. Um, to not go through the exact minutia of this, I will briefly just talk about that in order to anytime we make a major service change where more than 25% of the revenue hours of a route are reduced, we have to do two Title VI analysis. We have to do a disparate impact analysis, and we have to do a disproportionate burden. Disparate impact looks at minority and non-minority riders. Disproportionate burden looks at the difference between low income and non-low income riders. For the changes on the 53, 61, and 62 for disparate impact, the Arlington County average for minority populations is 39%. As you can see here on the screen, um, all three of these routes operate in areas that have a minority population well below the county average of 39.8%. And because of that, there was no disparate impact found in the analysis. Disproportionate burden, the Arlington County average of low income population as a percentage of the total population is 16.7%. Two of the routes did not show a disproportionate, disproportionate burden, although all three of them were above the Arlington County average of 16.7%. The difference of those two of those is less than 10% of the impact rating, the 53 and the 62. Uh, and then the Route 61 was above the average at 39.9%. The impact is greater than 10%. There would be a disproportionate burden. However, with Title VI, we are required to show mitigation factors and be able to talk about those changes. And most of the routes Alignment is within walking distance of the Route 43, 45, and 55. So that's how we can show that we have shown mitigating factors for the Title VI analysis. That's all I have in regards to the proposed service changes as part of the proposed FY25 budget. Chair Carton. Okay. Thanks, Clinton. Uh, any quick questions for Clinton? We do need to move along here. We all, I'll just comment, we always hate to lose service, but I think you all made the right choices in terms of our lower performing services. So we're, that's good to see. Absolutely. And so we, this, the, I guess the reassuring thing is this was part of our TSP and those enhancements that we're going to go with these reductions. We'll look at figuring out how to sync with those in the future if, as budget, as with the whole transit strategic plan, it always depended on as budget allowed. Exactly. Okay, thanks, Clinton. You're welcome. Okay, the next item is proposed Art and Star fare increase. All right, me again. Just All briefly, right. we'll go into what Kurt was talking about as far as WMATA and their proposed changes to their fares. So here we just have a slide on our fare increase to align with WMATA, as Kurt Dan was saying earlier. As part of the proposed FY 2025 county operating budget, the county board will be considering the adoption of fare increases for Art and Star commiserate with the WMATA increase. Just piggybacking off what Kirk said again, WMATA advertised up to 25% and our request to advertise that went before the board on February 26th, we actually request, we have up to 25%. However, at this point, WMATA this current proposal is for 12.5% increase and anticipated adoption at their budget of their budget on April 25th. We are going to also follow suit with WMATA with a proposed 12.5% increase. The proposed 12.5% art fare increase would take the base fare from $2 to 225. The seniors with disabilities and persons, senior citizens and persons with disabilities from 1 to 115. What I will say about this is that some of these were rounded to the nearest nickel to the nearest nickel or um, zero because the senior and disability fare, one dollar at twelve and a half percent made it a dollar and thirteen cents. So we wanted it to be just a dime and a nickel as opposed to one thirteen. 
Uh, proposed two and a half percent star fare increases, zone one, four to four fifty, zone two, five fifty to six twenty, and zone three, nine fifty to ten seventy. There it will be an, a request to advertise that goes out officially on April the 4th. If persons want to comment on this or any of the the route changes, um, the recommended route changes during the FY25 budget work session, the board will be having two public hearings and there is an online form for folks to be able to provide their testimony. Um, during the accessibility subcommittee, they also asked for us to make sure to get the word out to the, the disability community, and they asked for us to look at other ways to make sure we get this proposed 12.5% star fare increase out so that those in that community can be aware and can provide their feedback through this budget cycle. Okay, great. So any, any questions for Clinton on this art and star fare increase? Or comments? Mr. Chair, there is a comment in the chat that popped up. Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly read it. It says, uh, sir, does art ha have to match the fares of Metro? And who's asking the question? This is from W. Gonzalez. Okay. Not a member of the committee, right? Not a member of the committee. Yeah, this is from the public. Okay. Um, we typically don't respond once once we close the public comment um, because of the timeliness of the materials that we need to cover. We don't usually respond to questions from the public. But do you you have a quick comment on this, Clinton? The the quick answer to that is no. However, just for ease of use for passengers that are transferring between the two systems, our fare has fallen lockstep with WMATA's since the exception of art. Okay, great. All right, any comments or questions from the committee? Okay, hearing none, uh, uh, let's go on to Arlington Transit real-time bus arrival update. Sorry, I was muted. Um, are you guys seeing the presentation now? Yes. Awesome. So again, I'm Josh Drucker. I'm the Transit Technology Manager, and this is the Real-Time Challenges Update. Um, so we were having, we are having an issue with ghost buses. And what is a ghost bus? It is when real-time signs or transit applications are saying a bus is coming and then in reality, no bus comes. This doesn't happen too often, but when it happens, it, it really disrupts a passenger's day. So here's an example of, of an app showing that the bus is coming in three to one minutes, it should be arriving, and then no bus comes, and, and now you're, you see the next arrival in seven minutes. Um, so we've been working on fixing this issue, which I'll go over in just a second, and with that, we're also going to address um, our art alerts. You can sign up for art alerts to get a text message or email. You all can also can see them on the front page of our website when they are active. Um, but with this fix for the ghost buses, we'll also integrate those alerts into whatever uh, application you prefer to use, whether that's the Transit app, Google Maps, Apple Maps, Move It, um, whatever you want to use, it, it should be there. So what did we do? Um, we added some software capabilities to our current alerts. We had to kind of build a whole extra platform for our operations dispatch team to use. Um, and so what it will do is it will add the essentially the code needed and then upload it to these other sites. Um, and that was to integrate with the latest standards for in public transit and in those alert and uh, those that alert system. So what it will do is if a bus is no longer on the road for whatever reason, whether um, there's a maintenance issue or there is um, 
uh, maybe there's traffic and the bus has to detour and something happens. If a bus goes is no longer on the route, it will be taken off of this um, of these platforms instead of showing the scheduled time, which leads to these ghost buses. When it reverses the scheduled time, you know that's when oh there's no bus coming, but that's when it should have arrived. Now when the bus is not coming, it will actually say the bus is not coming, and you'll also get to see the written alerts that the dispatch team gets to write. Um, this solution is still is still we're training the operation staff on it, and we should be going live April first, twenty twenty four. And that's that's all I've got. Are there any questions? How often typically do the ghost buses, does this situation happen? It's hard to um, determine exactly, um, but it's and when it does happen, it's often a bus like for part of a trip. So the bus will do about half of a trip and something happens. Um, the bus is no longer continuing, but um, uh, the schedule will say that it's still supposed to arrive. So I don't have a good answer for that off the top of my head. Um, I'll say we get a complaint probably about once a week, once every other week at this time. Um, but this will this will solve that issue. OK, so it's relatively it sounds like it's relatively small then. I believe so. I believe so. OK, it's it's tough to determine, though, when when that kind of a situation happens and quantify it uh -huh. and, unless someone calls it out, then it, then it's obviously very easy. OK. OK, other questions for Josh or comments? All right. Hey, Josh, I'll just ask you this um, since you're the tech guy. Are there some other tech things you're working on that are coming up that uh, are going to, you know, uh, make it more transparent to the rider? Um, for the locations of the buses and the schedule? Um, not at this time, but there are some cool technology uh, projects that I've been working on. Um, we're working on updating and uh, improving our automatic passenger counting. We have all the hardware on the bus. We're going to get some cool new software to really visualize how and where um, and when passengers are, are riding the bus so we can take that better into account when we're doing our planning and uh, for for uh, future increases in service that I'm, I'm sure are coming and I'm I'm sure Paul is is working on. How, how are the passengers counted now? Um, there's a couple different methods. One is when the passengers pay to get on the bus, we do count the payment. Um, but with that, there is no location of where they got on associated. It's just uh, one count for one one fare. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do have the hardware on the bus to do this automatic passenger counting. Um, but it is it's not perfect yet, so that's why we're working on cleaning it up. OK, good. All right, any other questions or comments? for Josh. OK, if not, let's move on to the Arlington Transit Service and star performance update. All right, just briefly talking about the star and art updates. Quick update on a star service. There was a, as we came and shared with you all during the month of January, we had a online engagement and an in-person engagement on January 31st at the Central Library. And so we had a series of questions that we asked, just gauging star users and those that are star supporters, their level of importance to different features that we would like to focus on as we move forward with the RFP. 
there was a series of questions that the folks online could provide and also you could call in and then also persons had the opportunity to provide their feedback at the January 31st open house. Level of importance, I'll just go through some of these. Um, on the left hand side, you'll see the question that was or a summary of the question that was asked of the 46 respondents that we had for this feedback. 58 of those, of course, also shared open ended comments. Zone two, based on very important and moderately important, showed that that was 87 percent. That's how important it was to those respondents. Zone one came in at 83 percent. Same day trips was 82 percent importance to the folks. Online scheduling, we are at 61 percent. And then zone three, which provides service through the furthest points of Arlington, I'm sorry, to the star zones. Um, as far as level of importance between very important and moderately important, we respondents made that 56 percent. Um, never important. So we had several questions. What we did with this engagement is that the feedback that we received during the fall engagement, we brought that down to focus on four areas for this engagement. Those four areas were developed based on the feedback that we heard the most during the fall engagement. This just provides a summary. What will come out next is that our CAPES team will do a full summary and do a full report out on this winter 2024 feedback and provide a written report on that. That's just a quick overview of the STAR service and the feedback that was provided. Moving on, just talking briefly about art service, uh, trips and hours. As you can see in this graphic here, and many of you all that utilize the STAR system, you may have experienced this um, since the turn of the year, we've had lots of maintenance issues with our fleet. Um, the newer buses um, have had various issues, just a laundry list of different things that we didn't anticipate. And so that is negatively impacting the experience of passengers. And so as we went and our service team went and looked at just the number of missed trips and hours so far during fiscal year 2024. You'll see in this graphic that in July and August, we were we were missing just a few hours of missed trips. Then it spiked when school came back in session in September, um, missing over 60 hours. Then it tanked and got back down to a point where the buses were, the fleet was in a good state of good repair during the last quarter of FY, the second quarter of FY24. And then since the year has turned going in January and February, we're seeing additional maintenance issues and just a laundry list. So we've been working with our contract service provider to try to get our finger exactly what is happening with the fleet, because we want to provide reliable transportation that people can depend on to get where they need to go. So this kind of just gives you an update of our experience right now with the service and we are actively working to get this remedied so that trips that are on the on the public schedule are there and they can run as they are supposed to. Were there certain issues that stood out as the real drivers of these missed trips, you know, a mechanic certain mechanical problem or you know anything you can point you know, your I, at? I think one of the quirkiest things that we saw was that one of our bus manufacturers, they came to fix one problem, but then it negatively impacted the rear doors on the buses. So then the rear doors on the series of buses weren't weren't working and it came to fix one problem. And that, but in talking with our maintenance manager this morning on our weekly maintenance call meetings, it's just a it's you name it. It can be all things we suspension issues, preventive maintenance things, just a laundry list, not one specific thing. So um, we're getting, we're, we've asked them to work over the weekends to get more fleet, um, to include, to increase the fleet reliability, just so that we can make service on the weekdays and make the Monday, the weekday pullout so that folks can get to where they need to go. Right. Um, one final thing on um, performance update, I'm just going to go to the 
dashboard, if everyone can still see my screen. The dashboard was updated recently to go through January 2024. Um, on the dashboard, as you all are aware, you can look at art system-wide ridership, ridership by route, service efficiency. One thing that we're always talking about is on-time performance, is the bus getting to where I wanted to go on time. And then miles, miles between road calls, which goes to what I was just talking about. Um, you could see just right here in December how right here it's spiking back up again. But I'll go back to system-wide ridership. Um, this line here, the black line with the um, with the circles, the points, you can see how ridership is recovering in comparison to 2021. And then this line here is 2022. And then the orange line, of course, represents when the bottom fell out when COVID hit. So ridership is recovering. Um, we're seeing double digit increases year over year. And so we're happy that ridership is recovering. Um, of course, the commuter, the program where we had fare free rush during October through uh, October through January, that helped in bringing folks back to the Arlington Transit System. And we're just always looking at doing different marketing things and getting people back on public transit. So as folks on the committee at your leisure, if you want to look more into each of these metrics going all the way down to star ridership, you can just do so at your leisure, giving you an overview of how the system is doing. So this dashboard is updated through January 2024. So that's kind of an overview of our maintenance challenges, the performance of the star and the Arlington and the art system, and also an overview of the star winter public engagement. Mr. Okay. Chair. And that's available on the website? Yes. I um, If you see here, I'm just right on the Arlington Transit okay. website. Just go right to About Art and then Art Service Performance Dashboard. And it pops right up. And folks can take questions or review this information and ask questions as their leisure. Okay. All right. Questions or comments for Clinton that performance? Okay, uh, not hearing any. Um, let's move on to the report from the Accessibility Subcommittee. Maybe it's good we've got some extra time for that tonight. So, um, yes, hi everyone. This is Alexa. Um, welcome to our new members. Um, some of you uh, may already know this, some of you may not, but. Um, I actually have recently accepted a new job and I will be working nights. So I, unless a commission meeting is on Monday night, I will actually not be able to attend. So, um, and I'm on several different commissions. So I'm not sure which ones that I will end up being able to remain on and which ones I will not. Um, uh, Again, depending on how things uh, fall out, I may or may not be able to schedule things such that I can continue to chair the subcommittee meetings. Um, probably if the TAC continues on Tuesday, I'll have to leave the TAC as well, which um, is very sad for me. I've, I've been on for, for many years and I will miss you guys quite a lot. Um, as far as the presentations that we got tonight, they were pretty much the same as uh, the ones you guys got. Um, I would say that my main concerns uh, would be that um, what I've heard from the community is that it wasn't clear exactly why the particular the items that were polled, what are you most concerned about? Zone one, zone two, uh, medical will calls, those various things that you saw in that graph, it was not entirely clear to us um, where those um, exactly had come from, 
whether some of them had come from what was a, what the county had put on a previous survey versus whether they came from uh, responses and feedback from the community. So um, I would say that one of my concerns is just um, that I want to be sure that um, throughout the process of you know, putting out an, a new RFP for STAR, uh, negotiating a new contract, all of that stuff, um, that the county is very uh, clear and transparent with us about um, exactly which um, choices and decisions are related to uh, community feedback and exactly how. But as far as the information we got, it was pretty much the same uh, as what y'all got tonight. Okay. Alexis, um, um, we, we, we congratulate you on your new job, but we'll be sorry not to have you <laughs> here with us. <laughs> um, but anyway, we appreciate, you know, your service through the years and you've been doing this for a long time and been very dedicated to it. So we certainly appreciate that. And we've also lost one of our other one of your other subcommittee members. Why don't you tell them about that? Uh, <laughs> things are messing with me. Um, Herschel Cantor uh, has moved uh, out of Arlington County. Um, <coughs> So he has resigned uh, from both the Transit Advisory Commission and the Accessibility Subcommittee. Um, he was on the TAC longer than I was, so I'm sure some of you guys have stories that I can't even guess at. But, um, you know, he's definitely been um, a fixture and a passionate member of the community. So uh, we're very sorry to uh, see him go as well. Right, right. He was very dedicated and you, as you say, very passionate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But we're pleased that we still have Laura on the committee. Laura, would you like to have something to say? Hello. Hi, Laura. We can hear you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm. I'm I'm just uh, listening to the presentations tonight, and um, uh, that that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Well, um, looks like you're going to have uh, two new members on your committee. That's great. Yeah. So that that's good news, uh, Roseanne and Kent. But that's you know, we're sorry to see the other two leave, but uh, those things happen. Okay, so um, let's see. As we uh, wrap up here, Alexis, any other issues we should be thinking about for the future? or thoughts you'd like to pass along to us? I just I just hope that um, folks will um, keep in mind, um, you know, considerations that do affect the, the disability community that may or may not um, affect other Arlington residents, um, like uh, star fares and service and, um, you know, the, the county's contracts for those services and all of those sorts of things. Um, the, the subcommittee will go on and um, I know both of our new folks and I know that they're very passionate so that, so I know that they will uh, continue to make sure that these um, issues are visible, but I just wanna make sure that, um, you know, everyone pays attention to them because I know that sometimes uh, you know, if you're not a part of a particular community yourself, it can be easy to overlook or or not notice or not hear about, uh, you know, things that may be going on that are um, important to um, uh, different sub communities within our larger community. So mm -hmm. I would just ask folks to keep that in mind. And again, I'm really sad to leave and I'm going to miss you guys a lot.
And, um, you know, one thing I ask, would ask you to do is uh, keep in mind um, if there's, you know, some good candidates that you know of to um, uh, be a member of the subcommittee to uh, certainly encourage them to um, consider um, making an application to be a member. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. OK. Any other comments on the accessibility subcommittee from anybody? OK, if not, uh, are additional items from the committee members and staff that we need to discuss at this time? All right, um, I, I ask for one and that is uh, just remind us of any upcoming hearings that are um, coming up on the county budget and also on the metro budget that people might be interested in participating in. Who can take a stab at that? Kirk, you want to talk about uh, any upcoming WMATA hearings? Just remind us. Yeah, so um, on from March 20th through April 3rd, at, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, there will be a mock-up of the 8000 series train as well as a electric bus that people can go see the the new technologies and the uh, and and the format of the new 8000 series train, which is the gangway. So there's two cars attached to each other, and you can walk from one car to the other, and they're in two car pairings. Um, this will just be a I, th I believe it's a one and a half car mock up, but um, it's not like you'll be able to go from the front of the train all the way to the rear of the train, but you can go from the front of one car to the rear of the second car behind it. So it's got a totally different configuration of the seating and um, it'll be interesting for people to check out. Once again, that's March 20th through April 3rd from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the mall. On the mall, okay. On the mall. Do you know where it is on the mall? The um, Pierre had sent out a link to you guys. I'm going to drop it in the chat. Okay. And um, this would have more information. Oh, it's already there. Andre threw it in already. Thank you, Andre. Um, but uh, that would uh, give you the 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 directions to get there. Okay. But they it's it's nice that they're having it. Um, coincide with the uh, cherry blossoms so that, um, you know, more people might have the opportunity to go see it that might not have even known it was going to be up. So, right. Okay. And then Good. the, um, the, the next WMATA board meeting will be on the 21st. So, um, I don't expect any big stuff to come out because they're still compiling all the data from the public hearings okay. for the budget. So, um, you know, the, the exciting stuff will be happening in April, I do believe. Okay, good. And can one of you remind us about the um, Arlington County budget hearings when those are? Mr. Chair, I can post a link to the chat. I don't believe the actual dates have been scheduled. It's supposed to happen between now and April, um, but I just checked the, the site and there's not any dates posted as of tonight. OK, all right, so keep keep us posted when you see those posted. All right, any more uh, comments and questions? If not, thank you all for participating tonight. And our next meeting is going to be on Tuesday, May 14th. So I look forward to seeing you all then. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.